Welcome to Electro Online. Our next problem from the JE Advanced Test from 2021, section 2 or paper 2, deals with center of mass and orbital motion. Maybe I should have put orbital motion on there as well. It says the distance between two stars of mass is 3, ma 3 ms and 6 ms is 9 r. Here r is the mean distance between the centers of the Earth and the Sun, and m sub s is the mass of the Sun. The two stars orbit around their common center of mass in circular orbits with period n times t, where t is the period of the Earth's revolution around the Sun, and the value of n is. So n is going to be an integer number times the t, the period, the time that it takes for the Earth to go around the Sun. So let's make a quick drawing of this. So we have a bigger star and we have a smaller star. The big star has mass six times the mass of the Sun, and this smaller star is three times the mass of the Sun, which still makes it a big star, of course, because it's bigger than our Sun. And the distance between the two is 9r, r being, of course, one astronomical unit, or the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Their common center mass will be closer to the large star, and since this star is twice the size of this one, that means the distance to the center mass should be half as big as this, so this becomes 3r, and this becomes 6r to add up to 9r, so 3r is half, 6r. So now we're going to have to find the orbital period of the small star relative to the orbit, orbital period of the Earth to the Sun. So there what we're going to do is use the following equation. We're going to use the force of gravity is equal to the centripetal force, and for the, for the Earth and the Sun, this becomes g little m big M over r, and of course it'll be the mass of the sun, and that equals mv squared over r. Notice that the mass of the small object cancels out, and oh, this should be r squared, so g m m over r squared equals mv squared over r, and then this r will cancel out this r, makes that a 1, and so we end up with v squared is equal to the square root of g times the mass of the sun divided by r, and therefore, oop, v squared, let's go ahead and take the square root off, so the square root of both sides will be equal to this. The orbital velocity equation is equal to g m over r, and of course m being the large mass, r being the distance between the two objects, and g is of course a universal gravitational constant. Let me make that a little bit more like a g, like this. And it's good to know that equation, so you could just plop it right down. Now we're going to use the same equation for the situation we have here, and now we're going to relate the two to each other. So F due to gravity equals the force due to centripetal motion. So in this case, we're going to use the same equation. We have G, small m, big M over the distance squared equals, that would be M V squared over the distance. Now notice that these two are not the same, so I'm going to call this distance 1 and distance 2. They're not the same distance. With the centripetal motion, it's the distance to the center mass, because that's about the point at which the, the object orbits, and the force of gravity depends upon the distance between these two objects, so the two distances are not going to be the same, and that's important to note. Again, the small mass cancels out. We don't have to worry about it. The big mass is the mass of the big star, which is six times the mass of the sun. So we get six times the mass of the sun. We have the g in front of that. And we divide that by the distance between them. Notice where we have the distance between them squared. That would be 9r squared. 9r, and we're going to square that. And on this side, we have v squared divided by the distance, that will be 6 times r. So in this case, on the right side, we have g, 6 ms, divided by 81 r squared, is equal to v squared over 6 r, and now you can see that this r will cancel out with one of those r's. And, notice we can move this across over here, so we end up with g, times 36 over 81 mass of the sun over r equals v squared, or we know that v is equal to the square root of 36 over 81 
times the square root of g mass of the sun times r. And when we simplify that, we get v is equal to 6 over 9 times the square root of g m sub s over r. So now we have the relationship between the velocity of the Earth around the Sun and the velocity of the small star around the big star. And notice the difference is 6 over 9 versus 1 over there. Now we need to relate that to the period. So we can start with the equation distance equals velocity times time or time equals distance over velocity or the period is equal to the distance covered by the small star which is 2 pi times 6r divided by the velocity which is right here which is equal to, when I plug that in here, we have 6 over 9 times the square root of g m s over r. Okay, so now you can see that the 6s cancel and the 9 goes to the top so we have the period is equal to 9 times 2 pi r divided by the square root of g m sub s over r. Now if we find the period of the earth, the period of the earth which is equal to distance over velocity and the distance is going to be 2 pi r, the velocity is going to be the square root of g m sub s over r and now let's relate these two to each other and notice everything is the same except in this case, we're multiplying this whole quantity right here, which is the same as the quantity over here. We multiply it by 9. So the period of this star going around the big star is 9 times the period of the Earth going around the Sun. So therefore, the number we're looking for here is n equals 9. So that's the key to solving that. I always like this relationship. I always like to use the equation that the force of gravity equals to the centripetal force. So GMM over R squared equals MV squared over R. Notice that in the case of the Earth, these two R's are the same. But in the case of a large star going around an even larger star, notice that they're going around the center mass, which is not in the big star like it is for the Sun and the Earth. And therefore, we need to make sure that we realize that these two R's are not the same, otherwise you don't get the right answer, and that is how it's done.